What up, what up? Man, I gotta say, man, these MMA events, they just fly. <laughs> Before you know it, it's like I'm almost late. Whatever. Here we are, UFC 101. I think it's uh, the Ultimate Fighting Championship's first endeavor into the state of Pennsylvania, or at least into Philadelphia, at least. Um, the main event is, of course, Kenny Florian versus BJ Penn. And the co-main event is uh, Anderson Silva versus Forrest Griffin. These are two very interesting fights, you know, two very big, high-profile, highly anticipated battles between, you know, just four great fighters. And um, this also features, even though the names on the undercard aren't as big, I think it'll be a lot of great fights. I think a uh, sleeper fight of the night, I'm looking at that Kurt Pellegrino and Josh Neer. That is, those are two gamers. That should be some real good shit. Um, but focusing on the two on the two big fights, um, these are just some very interesting battles. I mean, these are going to tell us a whole lot about, you know, these four combatants. Um, and that's the kind of fights that I really like. Those are the kind of cards that I want to see. Something that really tells you something. Even though a lot of the fights on the other card will be entertaining, I'm not sure how much any of those guys, I'm not really assured of their future in this particular division. I'm sure we'll probably learn about learn a lot about them in uh, future events, but you know these aren't really cataclysmic like this particular one right here. This is going to determine some careers right here. And uh, starting with uh, Anderson Silva versus Forrest Griffin right here. Um, Anderson Silva is, of course, the middleweight champion. He's coming over a decision. He's coming after a, a decision victory to Talos Latus. He was highly criticized in that fight as he was his last. Um, uh, I've made my point on that many, many times throughout two videos. However, um, I personally contend that his problems in his last couple fights have been due to the lack of challenge in this particular division, and I call it that. And I called for the uh, 205 to really challenge this guy. Uh, Dana White has obviously heard all the criticism. He's, you know, been a, he's said himself that he was embarrassed over his last couple fights with Anderson Silva. And um, he decided he was going to find a challenge for this guy. And he was going to, you know, find someone that's not afraid of him. And who else but Forrest Griffin, the original Ultimate Fighter. This guy is the ultimate gamer, the ultimate worker. This guy will get a fight out of anybody. And I expect him to have a great fight with Anderson Silva. Um, and or Forrest Griffin, this is going to prove a lot about him. Um, as I said before his fight with uh, Rashad Evans, even though Forrest excels at being the underdog, if you underestimate him, he can exactly... If you underestimate Forrest Griffin, he's going to find that hole. He's going to take what you give him and find a way to beat you with it. Um, as I said before... A lot of people, you know, as everyone knows, his weaknesses are his jaw is not the strongest. If you get him with one good time, you know, it's like usually you can finish him. He has pretty good cardio to make up for it, to recover pretty quickly, as he showed in the Quentin Jackson fight. However, if you do not give him quarter, if you can really capitalize on him, if you don't underestimate him, like Rashad Evans, he came there ready prime for the fight of his life and just really was able to eventually take Forrest down and take him out. Um, and this is all, this basically falls in line right here. I think if uh, Anderson Silva, if he's going to, you know, underestimate Forrest Griffin, then he can easily lose this fight by decision. Another thing with uh, Forrest Griffin, of course, is the lack of danger. You know, a lot of people don't respect his punching. You know, he has great footwork and everything, and he has, you know, great, great, you know, real fundamental boxing and kickboxing. However, you know, he's just not very, you know, he's not very powerful, not, not a very imposing person offensively. Very good defensive fighter. You know, he does everything you could possibly ask him to do to win a fight. And he's made a great career. However, I think Forrest is starting to get to that point where hard work isn't enough. Where, you know, the more talented guys that actually work that are willing to match his effort, like Rashad Evans did, is, uh, can just beat him. You know, there's little he can do about it. And I think he's found the same thing again in um, Anderson Silva. Uh, Anderson Silva didn't just fall out of the sky with his talent. I mean, I've seen him in his older Man, pride fights or whatever. You know, why does it always happen when I'm doing a video? Anyway, Anderson Silva, I think a lot of people don't understand how hard he works, how great of a team that he has. 
and um, I think he's a much better fighter, you know, tactically, and you know, just uh, as a feel for the game. I think he's a better fighter than Rashad, and I think he'll pick up on Forrest's timing a lot quicker, because I think uh, Forrest is primarily a stand-up fighter. However, his uh, combos are very basic, very drilled, not basic basic, but you know, just he's very disciplined to the point where, you know, it's like his basic all he does is one, two, circle out, kick, you know, one, two, circle out, kick, you know, very little other than that. And I think um, Anderson Silva can pick up on that a lot faster than most of his previous opponents and make him pay in the stand-up. Uh, Force, you know, a lot of people think that Force's best chance is on the ground. Possibly, but I think that as good as Forrest is on the ground, he's not, he's not exactly known for his wrestling, not exactly great at takedowns. It may help him that he's, you know, 250, whatever, 240 pounds, whatever he comes in on fight night, but against a middleweight like Silva. But I think Silva's probably better on the ground, too, and I think he's probably even a pretty good wrestler. Silva takes a lot of crap for his wrestling, but I think he's, whenever I've seen him actually try to stop the takedown, he's been pretty good at it. But that's going to, anyway, we're going to find out who the best is. And I think that, um, I see Silva kind of winning this inside of uh, two rounds. I think Forrest Griffin, he's not going to run from him. And that's going to probably be his undoing. You know, he's going to be in there, you know, to be in there to take the fight to Silva. And I think that's probably going to be his undoing right there. Um, the main event is, of course, uh, Kenny Florian versus BJ Penn. Now, as you as I've repeatedly expressed my opinion on um, Tyler Slatus versus Silva. I've also expressed my opinion on BJ Penn in detail. Um, BJ Penn obviously a great fighter, but his lack of motivation and his uh, and his egotistical pursuits have really got on my nerves over the past couple, you know, the past couple months, past several months since that. But um Uh, he's been looking really good. He's been saying all the right things, except when it comes to St. Pierre. But he's been saying all the right things, doing all the right things, and looking pretty good going into this fight. But um, Kenny Florian, this guy's this guy's blood. He wants <laughs> Kenny Florian want is in his blood. It's in his heart. It's in his soul. He wants the world title. He is working himself nonstop. You know, always making himself better, always improving, traveling. You know, all over the place. He's even trained with George St. Pierre. That won't make him George St. Pierre. A lot of people, you know, but a lot of can be a lot can be said for training and you know learning the things that George St. Pierre has. Because uh, in addition to being a great athlete, George St. Pierre's camp is one of the most scientific and most knowledgeable camps I've ever seen, and it can only help uh, Kenny Florian training training with him, learning some of the things that um, learning some of the things that GSP knows as a fighter, as a nutritionist, and all this stuff. And uh, that's going to help him a lot against BJ. And plus, what George St. Pierre knows against BJ, he's the only guy to beat him twice. And he didn't just beat him just with his own ability. He also, he scientifically, uh, GSP's game plan was one of the most scientific, most brilliant things I've ever seen. It's a real great job. And I think that probably influenced the way people game plan for their opponents at the highest level. And uh, with Kenny Florian, with that benefit, his knowledge is, uh, this is a uh, question in both fights, how much hard work these guys put in against how much talent their opponent has. That's so with Kenny Florian and Horace Griffin, these both those guys exemplify, you know, um, hard work and you know just dedication to the sport and how that can make you a different fighter than just bringing what you brought. Uh, Anderson Silva and B.J. Penn, they represent the top of their sport in their divisions. You know, do they represent great athletic ability? And um, just, but guys that are in need of a challenge, you know, and they're going to get a challenge tonight. Um, in the Kenny Florian fight, I kind of got him by decision or so. Uh, it's going to be hard to get a round out of BJ, but with his abilities, I think he'll be able to, you know, somehow ride out the storm and I think he might be a very close decision for Kenny Floyd. We'll never know or he could just get smoked in the first round. Who knows? But we're going to find out just how good this guy is and just how much hard work is going to affect the legendary physical ability of BJ Penn. I'll hopefully be back with you later. Thank you very much. We'll see y'all later. All right. Bye.